So today we're going to be looking at the Crucial P3 2TB PCIe3 SSD. Now this is a cost-effective SSD from Crucial. It's not the fastest, it's not the latest and greatest, but this is a great secondary drive for your laptop. Now if you've got a modern laptop and you've got a fast PCIe4 SSD as your primary drive, that's fantastic. Your OS will boot incredibly quick, anything you do on that drive will be amazingly fast. But very often these laptops have, or motherboards will have more than one SSD slot, like this Alienware here that's got two. So if you're populating that second slot, there's no point putting an incredibly expensive and fast PCIe Gen 4 drive in unless you know you need that extra speed. If you're just loading games or storing files, putting in a slightly older but much cheaper Gen 3 drive is a great solution. Now this P3 from Crucial has got a read speed of 3,500, which is still great for everyday use. It comes with a five year warranty and, and it is an incredible price. So this can be a great for my games drive on my Anywhere X17R2. So we're gonna unbox it quickly. We're gonna install it into this Anywhere X17R2. We're gonna compare it against the primary drive in this laptop, which is the 980 Pro from Samsung, which was a great drive when it was released. And we're gonna see what the temperatures and the benchmarks are like for this drive for the value. So let's start by taking a look at the actual drive itself. Now this box came in incredibly crushed, so hopefully this is all right. Opening it up, we've just got just the warranty and information on the actual drive itself. And then we've got the Crucial P3 SSD that you see here, and they do supply you with a screw, which a lot of the manufacturers don't do. This is quite handy because not every laptop or motherboard will provide the screw for the SSD, so it's nice that they provided it. Now looking at the drive itself, this is a two terabyte model. So this will be the highest capacity I believe they do in this uh, P3 model. And the advantage of buying a two terabyte or below drive like this is it is a single sided drive. So if you notice the back is completely flat, there's no chips on the back. All of the memory chips are on the front. Now if you're installing that into a laptop, that's really handy because the SSDs on most laptops sit very close to the motherboard, meaning that a lot of the double sided drives, which would be the four terabyte drives, will not work or fit in these laptops, whereas these single-sided two terabyte and below drives have no problems at all. Also, this model doesn't come with a heat sink, and that's great because in a laptop we don't want that, and very often on your motherboard you'll probably have heat sinks provided with the actual uh, slot itself. So I'm gonna open up my X17R2, and that's a very easy process with this laptop. We're talking a few screws and a base plate. It just pops right off, and it gives you full access to the two M.2 slots on this motherboard. Now you can see I've already got a Gen 4 drive installed with a heat sink on it, which you do need to keep it cool. And this drive here will go into the secondary slot and I do have a heat sink. Hopefully you will have two. If you don't have a heat sink on your drive, you can pick them up from Amazon at a reasonable price and they do really help, especially on a laptop. Now before we install the SSD, we need to quickly unplug the battery so we don't do any damage whilst we're working on the laptop itself. We're gonna take our new Crucial drive and I'm gonna insert it at a slight angle into the M.2 slot and push it home. Then I'm gonna take my heat sink plate, put it over the top, and I'm gonna use the original screw to screw it back down, holding it all back in place. We then just plug the battery back in, install the base plate back on, and then boot the machine up and we're ready to go. So with the SSD installed, we've booted the PC back up, but when you first boot, you will not see the new SSD appear in File Explorer on the new laptop or PC. First thing we need to do is initialize the drive. So if you right click on the Windows flag, and choose disk management, it will automatically pop up as it's a fresh drive and ask you to initialize it. Click yes to that, and then on the drive itself, right click on the unallocated space and format it. Follow the prompts, choose the drive letter, put a name in for your drive and apply that. Within a couple of seconds, your drive will be formatted and will show in File Explorer. Now, although it's a two terabyte drive, after it's formatted, you'll be down to about 1.8 terabyte. That's very standard. It's quite annoying, but it's something that's always happened with hard drives and SSDs. So now that we can see the drive in File Explorer, we're gonna run a benchmark with Crystal Disk Mark, and we're also gonna run Crystal Disk Info just to monitor the temps whilst we're stressing this drive. Now, being that we're in a laptop, this is kind of the worst case scenario for an SSD. If it's in your PC with a much bigger heat sink and better airflow, it'll probably run cooler than it will in this Alienware here. So rather than bore you running all the way through the Crystal Disk Mark test, I'm gonna to skip to the end and we're gonna look at the results. Now the 3,500 read speed was absolutely accurate. It comes in just under 3,500 for the sequential reads and the sequential writes were about 3,000. So not the fastest drive in the world. It is a PCIe 3 drive. So definitely nowhere near as fast as the PCIe 4 drives that are available. 
And as an example, the 980 Pro that we have been using in this machine, you get double the sequential read speed. It's just under 7,000. And the sequential write speed on that 980 Pro was over 5,000. So much, much faster than this drive. But unless you're copying large files on and off this drive regularly, you're not gonna notice that difference. And this puts in some very good random read and write results in comparison to even a more expensive 980 Pro. And with regards to the temperatures, being obviously a slightly slower drive, these do run very cool. We've got a max temperature on this drive at 56 degrees centigrade. That's two degrees less than the 980 Pro. Now that's not a massive difference, but it is nice that it does run cool. So if this is your secondary drive and it's a game drive or a storage drive, something like this is absolutely perfect and well worth saving some money rather than paying an absolute premium for the PCIe 4 drives. Loading into games and running your main apps, we'll hardly notice any difference between this and the PCIe 4 drive. Only if this is your primary drive where your operating system is, would you really see a difference with a Gen 4 drive. So there we go. I would definitely, definitely recommend this as a secondary, cheaper option drive for your system. Keep your PCIe Gen 4 drives for your primary drive, have that as your speedy drive. They are more expensive, they are faster. But for your secondary drive, for storage, games, apps, anything else, this is a perfect candidate and it has saved you so much money. As always, pop your questions in your comment section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thank you for watching.